Hello, I'm Lawrence from Project Heaven. Today we're going to be talking about this very exciting uh, Tesla suspension unit project that we've been working on. So this is something Project Heaven's been working on for a few months. It's in the very early stages of prototyping, as you can see. Uh, and the idea behind this is to incorporate um, a Tesla electric drive uh, power unit into a classic car. So the unit you can see in front of you is the very first um, prototype, not uh, made for in, um, not made strong enough to be used on a car, but certainly uh, good enough to model it and and, uh, and check for the shape and the fit uh, into a classic car. So you can see some components. So you might recognise this is from a Jaguar independent rear suspension, and this obviously is the Tesla uh, inverter and motor and gearbox unit inside. So Ed, the master fabricator at Project Heaven here, has made this uh, cage to house the Tesla power unit and uh, it then incorporates some pickup points for the suspension. He's also made these suspension wishbones uh, to suit the uh, Jaguar uprights. So one of the, one of the most common suspension units uh, in um, prestigious classic cars is the, is the Jaguar independent rear suspension unit. They uh, used it for several decades. It was a very well designed bit of suspension. So one of the things that uh, we started by doing was to model the Jaguar E-Type suspension. So all of the dimensions and angles and pickup points were modeled in CAD, two-dimensionally, you can see it here. Uh, and the reason for doing that was to measure the roll center location of that suspension unit. So every car has a roll center. If you were to roll the car, that's the point at which uh, there is no movement, the center of its rotation. Uh, every car also has a center of mass, front and back. And if the center of mass is above the center of rotation, then when you corner, the car will roll, which obviously is what most cars do. Uh, if the distance between the roll center and the center of gravity is, uh, is very different from the front to the rear of the car, uh, you get some sort of twisting behavior and a car might lift a wheel like you see um, minis on, on racetracks lifting their back wheel, uh, or some uh, rear drive cars lifting a front wheel. So those characteristics are built in from the get-go from the beginning, and we'd like to not interfere with that suspension characteristic. So starting with the E-Type, we modeled those roll centers on CAD. Uh, and then when we began to design this, uh, we wanted those roll center location to be in the same place, basically. Uh, and that's what we achieved here with this. So this is the first iteration. This can be used on, uh, on a number of cars, more of a generic thing, really. Uh, this upright is a Jaguar one, but of course a new upright would be cast and machined uh, to suit this. So further work from there is to actually get this to fit the E-Type. The E-Type Jag is, uh, is quite a tight uh, space under the chassis, so there isn't actually room for this upper wishbone. Uh, anyone who knows about Jags will know that the, the upper wishbone is actually the drive shaft, so there's nothing up here. Um, so I'm going to show you the other side of this uh, working prototype uh, to describe what we're doing to fit this actually under an E-Type Jag. So on the other side of this prototype here, we've got uh, another upright and you can see there's been a bit more work done to this one. Um, the reason for this is the chassis leg on the E-Type is, is right here, it's very close, and indeed the, the bump stop mounts on the bottom of the chassis leg, and it contacts the top of this upright uh, if you hit a huge bump and, and bottom out the suspension. So there's no room for a wishbone on the top under the E-Type. Uh, in keeping with the E-Type's suspension, the drive shaft would be here, and that is the upper wishbone. So this hole here aligns perfectly with this... Uh, universal joint on this upper dry on this drive shaft sorry so if we can put a wishbone here from the side of the upright then the geometry would match exactly the e-type no need for cad modeling at all on this so one of the other things we can do if an e-type is converted uh, we can actually reuse the lower wishbone so this wishbone that ed's made would, would not be used in the e-type conversion so we can reuse the lower wishbone and then project heaven will cast a new upright altogether um, to accommodate the strength needed in this side component uh, to locate the wishbone. We've also found uh, a component off another car which will be perfectly accessible and very strong, uh, which is a pillow, it's called a pillow bearing. It's essentially a ball joint with a bolt through it, and that will be the one which locates that upper wishbone. The last thing to consider with the E-Type, uh, it's, uh, it's an amazing suspension setup with a very low unsprung weight because the disc brake is actually mounted to the differential. So there's no brake on the outside of that hub. Uh, of course, there's no room for this with the Tesla unit and there's no provision for it to be mounted on the CV cup here. So 
uh, we're going to have to mount a caliper on the outside here. So um, a disc has been sourced which will be suitable and would match the original braking characteristics of the E-Type Jag. Uh, this is going to be re-drilled and will fit over the hub. And then of course a suitable caliper uh, will be fitted. So calculations are being done now uh, to make sure that caliper and disc will give the same braking distribution as the original E-Type. So as I say, this is a very early stage. Uh, this hasn't been offered up to the E-Type yet, although it has been in CAD. Uh, but yeah, work is progressing and it should be ready very soon. Well, that's it for this little update. Um, stay tuned for further work on this exciting project. Uh, hopefully we'll get it in a car soon. If you've got any questions about this, uh, please leave those in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching.